Hey everybody, I'm here again with Brian Sanchez. Always nice to see you, Brian. What's up, guys? Glad to be here, Steve. All right, so we're going to talk about stretching. Stretching is really important, and it, it can kind of seem boring, but we're, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about warming up which can be a form of stretching, but not static stretching. Yes. Static stretching is something that you do after your muscles have been worked and warm. That's when you would static stretch. So you're not going to go into a gym or into a workout or an athletic event and just static stretch cold. That's not the proper way to do it. So go ahead, Brian. I, 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 to add to what he just said, to what Steve just said, um, back in the 1980s, because I wasn't a college football star like Steve, but back in the 1980s when I played football, we would be in high school and and, and uh, um, we'd all be lined up and we'd be getting ready for the game and the coaches would have you out there and everybody would be on the ground doing hamstring stretches and counting to 20 and, you know, doing a, a hurdle or stretch and counting to 20. And that was before we performed. Well, I, I learned later on how that's probably not the best way to approach things. So when we were writing programs for these sport teams later on via our Parkway Club, which Steve also owns, um, when we were putting these things together, we really learned and focused on the pre-performance rituals, which we do technically shouldn't call it stretching, but we lump it into the same thing. Pre-workout. Now I do this with my clients, all the pre-workout movement, which is the warm up too, which I kind of loop into a stretching thing. It's probably more flexibility is very dynamic in movement. And what I'm focusing on are the uh, range of motion, the mobility of the body, waking up the muscles and getting prepared for the movement based on the workout itself. So if I'm doing uh, a leg workout with a, with a client, I'm not necessarily going to do a lot of upper body dynamic movement. I'm going to have some in there to get them warm, but I'm really going to make sure the hips are moving, the legs are moving, the hamstrings are moving, the calves are moving. Or if I'm doing something into the upper body, uh, you know, there'll be some warm up movements that utilize the legs, but I'm really going to be focused on, you know, back, shoulders, chest. And so I want you to think about that when you're preparing your pre-workout. You have to do this before every workout. I know this sounds silly. People are like, ah, it's going to take forever. It doesn't. I think all my pre-workout stuff is exercise. But it's dynamic movement preparing the body to perform. Once we're done with workouts, that's when the hold and stretch comes into play. And I want you to think about this. The body needs a little love. Steve talks about rest and, and rest should equal the intensity of the workouts. Well, a part of that is making sure we're taking care of the body after we perform. That is where the static stretching comes in. That's where uh, your rolling comes in. Uh, that's where the holding and counting. And what we're actually doing is we're not only stretching the muscle out, but in reality, we're relaxing the muscle. And, and I don't remember, I don't know if it's called the Golgi tendon. Uh, there's, a, there's a molecule or there's something in every muscle that it, it's designed to keep the muscle from exploding, if you will. And these are layman terms for you technical people out there. I don't use big words. And so you want to hold those stretches. And so you want to get into a nice post stretch program to where you're holding these stretches for a good 30 seconds, because what that'll do is it'll engage that Golgi and then the muscle relaxes. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that love for the muscle so that it can kind of get comfortable and then we can nurture it back to where we need it to be for the next blast of performance. So pre-workout, before you crush it, you should be doing dynamic movement getting ready for the workout based on specifically that workout, post-workout, give those muscles some love, stretch and hold. Steve? Yeah, that's right, because I like how you put that. Nobody wants their muscles to explode. Right. That would be very, very bad. It's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I did play college football, and I was fortunate 
to be uh, trained by one of the best uh, strength coaches in the business at the time. And, um, yeah, we did a lot of things wrong in high school. Um, and the, if you watch, if you want to really see sophistication on how to get ready for, say, a football game or a track event or whatever, and you go to an NFL football game, get there early and watch what these guys do. Because their warm-up is about an hour. You know, they have all these rituals that they do, but it's movement. And they it's moving and stretching. Because what they're doing is they're trying to prevent injuries. And they warm up to prevent those soft tissue injuries like pulled muscles, tweaking things because obviously the NFL, uh, the NBA, Major League Baseball, believe it or not, these are extremely explosive sports. You watch a baseball player warm up. That doesn't happen in 10 minutes. It's a long, drawn-out process for these elite-level athletes to warm up so that they don't injure themselves. Now, they stretch after. Now, you never see somebody in the NFL, you know, stretching after a game. They don't stretch after a game, but they always stretch after practice. And that helps keep keep the soreness out. It keeps, it helps their flexibility and it's the best time to do static stretching where you stretch and hold. And an example I've always used is taffy. When taffy is warmed up, it stretches, right? Well, what does cold taffy do? It snaps. So the best time to stretch your muscles is after you performed, always after practice. And you know, I've been putting more uh, stretching into my uh, workout routines. I'm practicing what I preach. I talk about the importance of it all the time. I'm actually taking a good 10 minute stretch after I do my workout. I do my workout. I go up. And, um, I, I usually work out at the, the gym Brian's in right now and I'll push the sled and I'm loving it. But afterwards I'm right there. I sit down and stretch. I stretch my muscles and it's, it's really having a positive effect especially as you get older. So that's when you would stretch. If you guys have questions, put them in the comment section. And uh, it, it's something that really will help your overall level of fitness and make you feel better. And especially as you age, you know, as I think people that are older, they lose their balance ugh, and then they tip over. Well, part of that is a lack of flexibility. If you're flexible and you can put your leg out here and catch yourself, you're not going to fall over. Flexibility is one of those components of fitness that is beneficial to your overall health. Fact. You know, uh, uh, one more thing to add to that. Now, we're not saying you can't static stretch or use products to stretch prior to uh, performance in all instances. You may be one of those people that have like knots in your back that you just can't get to release and you may have to roll them out and hold them and get that release in the muscle. We understand that. But that's going to be very specific to the, the zone of the muscle that you have to get to. And so we want to clarify that. We're not saying you can't. There may be instances where you have to do specific muscle work prior to your, your gym routine or sports routine, but it's not the whole body you're doing that to. Everything else should be dynamic. Right. And I would just add to that too, because you will see some stretching by say you, you get to the NFL football game early, which is just fascinating to see the process that these guys go through. They will do some static stretching, but only on warm muscles. Right. So, they will do it, but it's not the first thing that, that they're going to do. They're going to move their body first, then maybe they'll throw in some static stretching. So 
these guys are professionals and they're, they got the best coaches in the world and uh, they're doing it right. And again, everybody's different because you're also going to see players at different positions are going to warm up differently, you know, because the, the specifics of their movement in a game, uh, they want to warm up for those specific movements. And so, you know, they're not all going to, you know, you'll see the, like, for instance, in football, you'll see certain groups, like I was a DB, defensive backs are going to warm up a certain way compared to offensive linemen, because the movements they're going to do in a game are different. So each position group is going to have their coach usually taking them through warmups, but usually... These players start warming up on their own. They get out on the field early. They don't have pads on. And they're going to do individual warm-ups. And then as they get closer to the game, they're going to do more group warm-up and potentially some stretching. Uh, but it, it's all specific. And so, yeah, you, you, Brian's right. Don't, don't, oh, yeah, they, they stretch. Yeah, they do, but they're not stretching cold muscles. That's the point that we're making. But I think what, what that adds to, Steve, is what you're saying is it's very specific to the position they play, which you can relate to the style of workout you're doing in a gym. Uh, uh, I think that uh, based on the individual person and what they're going to be exercising that day, the uh, the prep prior and, and post stretch should be designed for that workout. Right. For sure. You know, uh, an offensive lineman, they're, they're going to warm up their upper body because they use it a lot. Defensive backs, they're going to warm up their quads because they're backpedaling. Um, so try to be specific, especially as you advance in your workouts in the gym also be specific if you're going to do upper body workout warm up your upper body and you do that specifically by if you're going to do bench press you start with warming up with a bench press like maybe just a bar that's a warm up that relates to the gym if you're going to do squats you start with body squats you're warming up your body really lightweight or no weight and then you progress and you add weight as you continue your warm up into your workout. It's funny you say that. I mean, just uh, like yesterday, my 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 deadlift warm up takes probably a good twenty minutes before I even lift a weight. That doesn't mean I'm not using the bar. I am using the bar and part of that warm up. My uh, uh, chest warm ups. It's with the bars but I actually stretch using the bar and hold the bar at specific angles as I'm moving, preparing that body or my body for the workout. So always keep that in mind, everybody. Those are great tips from Steve. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Brian, thanks for being here. We'll talk to you next time. Take care, everyone.